Hello, I'm Maximilian Ebrard and I'm co-founder at UBees based in New York and we are a beekeeper who wants to save the bees. Hello, Max. Hi. What uh, UB does uh, goes beyond the dream, you know, it's, it's almost a mission. You're trying to save the bees and the world. In fact, you're trying to repair a scary anomaly. Uh, billions of bees are dying every year. What is happening? The world uh, we live in um, has evolved in a way that is not sustainable anymore for the bees. Um, and the fact they are dying out is due to multiple things. Uh, some of them are uh, based on uh, the way we do agriculture and the way we farm. Uh, some others uh, are just uh, due to human expansion. Um, and um, some others are uh, also due to the way we live because uh, with um, uh, the internalization and uh, the fact that we, uh, we exchange um, throughout the world. We bring in sometimes some new species, new predators for the bees that they need to, f that they need to fight. And uh, there's a beautiful quote that I saw on uh, UB's website, I, I quote, um, the bee is more honored than other animals, not because she labors, but because she labors for others. It's, it's a great, great quote because it shows yeah. the strong interdependence between species, including humans. So what are the bees doing for mankind? Um, basically, uh, the, um, the bees are uh, the key to the ecosystems. Without the bees, um, the nature we know would no longer exist. And uh, so uh, in sustaining this nature and helping it to evolve, uh, basically the bees help the humans. Uh, and they also produce some very valuable things for humans, uh, as you may know, uh, the honey, the wax, and they also pollinate. So in fact, uh, we have fruits thanks to them. This is, this is a great, uh, really a great story. So what pushed you into this? Because you went to a prestigious business school, HEC uh, <laughs> Paris, you could have been a great executive in a, in a big corporation or in finance on, on, on Wall Street. And it's quite delightful and, and great to see somebody like you in the fields and the hives with the bees. So where does the, your love for bees come from? Uh, when I was a student, um, I did a lot of research uh, on uh, the ecosystem and the nature and I fell in love with the bees. Um, what a nice story! <laughs> <laughs> a love story! Yeah, so, uh, no, no, so I was just uh, very disappointed and, uh, on how they were dying. Uh, at, that time, uh, at that time, they were also dying. And um, I, I, I said to myself, we need to do something and I have to start something. And this is how I get into love and after that into business with the bees. Yeah, that's nice. So, in fact, um, the, the way you do, oh, your bees does uh, business, you know, uh, explain to us how you keep the bees alive. And it's, it's a win-win business for the farmers and for the bees and, and for us, for, the, for our civilization. So what is your business model? Um, so uh, basically we want to save the bees but we want to do it in a sustainable way. So in order to do that we need to save them but also to finance it by being sustainable in the way we do it. So to do so uh, we researched uh, because in Europe you have a lot of urban beekeeping. Mm -hmm. 
uh, so in the cities. Uh, but this is not the way, um, this is a good way to save the bees, but this is not how it can be in the US. Because in the US, the market uh, is way bigger mm -hmm. because uh, you do, as a beekeeper, you do honey, but you also do pollination. And this uh, allows you bees to operate on a market that is more than a billion, actually. Million, billion dollars? Yes. So, uh, it's, uh, so it's bigger. And the way we do it is basically we run a beekeeping business and we investigate in every part of the business what we can do to enhance what is already done and to reinvent uh, the old ways to bring them back into fashion by using new tools like technology, uh, like research in labs and this kind of stuff. So, but uh, really, what do you mean by uh, pollination, for example? Okay. What do you do exactly? Uh, we rent a hive to a farmer um, mm -hmm. because, uh, for example, the big one uh, are the almonds uh, in California. Uh, so they need bees to go from one flower to the other to spread the pollen mm -hmm. in order to, um, uh, to just... Uh, Generate have the fruit or...? Yes, to make a nut, nut grow afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so the farmer pays a price for a rent uh, f of the hive. And basically this is it. This is great. This is great. And uh, you are an agritech, you just talked about it, yes. and you get some data. So what, is, what do you do with the data and, uh, and explain how it works? Um, so basically, uh, we are uh, in the prospection phase right now, but uh, the bees, uh, they, um, they have some very important things they do. The first one is they talk. <laughs> uh -huh. Can you imagine that? They talk. Uh, they keep uh, their house warm uh, and they keep their house dry. So this is, uh, this is uh, what, uh, what's the start for us. So we listen to them, uh, we record things like temperature, humidity in the hives, and this allows us to get a, a good feeling on what's going on. Uh, are the bees well? Uh, are they fighting something? Are they put under stress? Uh, and, 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 and this allows us, thanks to our beekeeping knowledge, uh, to uh, have a better feeling on what's going on and to help them if they need it. So you can, for example, uh, if they talk differently, you feel that they are, un are unhappy or they can be yes. ill and you can interfere with it, I mean... Yes, um, because basically um, uh, a few, uh, um, if you, um, a beehive doesn't die from one day to another. Um, there is a decrease in population okay. and finally it dies. So there are only a very few times where the hive dies from one day to another. So uh, if, you, if you sense something, if you hear something, if you measure something that is not right, mm -hmm. you can then go to the hive, uh, investigate, and most of the time you can find actually what's wrong and help it and save the beehive and the bees in it by the same time. Okay, so what's next? Uh, next, we uh, want to grow even bigger in the US because we cannot only save 30% of the bees. We need to save all of them. And to do that, we need to become market leader uh, to drag everyone else with us and to inspire, I hope, uh, in Europe, also in Asia. So, um, because if we succeed, we will show people that you can save the bees, you can do it in a sustainable way, you can gain some money um, and help the world. Okay, and you, you're talking about the almond trees, but are there on other crops, for example? That oh, you yes. Um, you have uh, apples. Uh, ba basically, 80% uh, of the crops needs the bees. Wow. Need the bees. So you have almond, you have apples, prunes, you have blueberries, uh, strawberries, tomatoes. So you have actually everything we love. Ev everything plus you honey, love. Plus honey. Plus <laughs> honey. So uh, yeah. So the bees are our friends. Of course. Yeah. And that's why I was uh, starting with you know you want to save the bees, but you also want to save the world. Of course. Because we need them. Yes. Yes. Uh, Einstein said something very interesting about it, but he said basically if the bees disappear. Uh, the mankind would only have um, a decade to live. Wow. So I, I, Einstein was right on some things, wrong on others, but I don't want to take the risk <laughs> to see if it's right. So we better save the bees before it happens. <laughs> Let, let's do it. So we trust yes. you on that, Max. Thank you. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Thank you too. <laughs>